Hello again. Let's move on to a new topic, and the topic is called certification. So what's the idea? Well, ideally, when you buy a security product or you go out and, and procure one somehow, the best thing to do is to understand the, uh, the security domain, and so you should figure out what your security needs are, do that security assessment we talked about early in this set of lectures, figure out what product best meets those requirements, and go out and buy it. That only makes sense, right? The problem is that most consumers don't know how to do that because they're not security experts. So you could hire somebody to do that for you. Alternatively, what, what you might do with the, uh, with the help of the government or some certification agency is hope that somebody else had looked at the, the marketplace of products and done this work for you and assessed the reliability and the security of various products and they just tell you, you know, this one has a very high rating, this one doesn't, so buy this one. Okay, so uh, that's what the certification game is all about. The government has gotten into this business and they've come up with what's called uh, a set of criteria, um, in particular what's called the common criteria, to do this sort of evaluation. What do you want from an evaluation? Well, you want to know uh, how to uh, evaluate various systems uh, that is a set of requirements, security functionality, that you would like a system to have in various contexts. So understand that the requirements for an operating system may be quite different than the requirements for a crypto box or for a firewall. Uh, and so you have to work out all those issues. You'd like a set of uh, assurance requirements, i.e. what is the policy for various kinds of things. And once again, the policies may be different for those categories of things. You'd like some methodology for applying the evaluation. And then at the end of the day, you'd like to be able to give a grade or uh, a, an evaluation result uh, to particular products saying, well, this, is, uh, this one's high, this one's low, this one's medium, perhaps. OK, so the government has done a lot of this for you. And there are really two big categories of systems. There's crypto boxes, and there's everything else. So, the, the government, because uh, cryptology is a particularly sensitive area and uh, there aren't as many experts in that area as in the other areas of security, has, uh, has some specialized um, documents which describe the evaluation of cryptographic modules. And this is typically carried out by the National Security Agency. Right. So these things are called FIPS 140-1 and FIPS 140-2, called Security Requirements for Cryptographic Modules. And they've evaluated a number of cryptographic products uh, from about 150 different vendors. Um, and what they've done is they've defined four levels of certification. And we'll look at those on the next slide. OK. So. Uh, if you're going to go buy a cryptographic uh, device for, say, home use or something like that, you probably don't need as high a level of security. So maybe you just need level one, which is just basic security. On the other hand, if you're the government and you're trying to protect you know, highly confidential information, maybe you need a much stronger level of certification, and then you might do level four, say. Um, so what are these levels? Well, level one is basic security. Just use at least one approved algorithm. Level two. You have some improved uh, physical security, including tamper-evident packaging, so that if somebody has tried to break into your crypto box, you can at least see that that's happened. Level three is very strong uh, tamper resistance and countermeasures, just more of the same. And then level four is you have a complete envelope of protection. Usually these kind of boxes are, you know, embedded in a, in a big, a epoxy ball or something like that, and so if you cut into it, uh, it's certainly obvious that that's happened, but it also zeroes out the keys, right? And so you, probably that level of security you don't need for you know your average average Joe doing cryptography, but the government probably does. Okay, so what have we said? Well, for cryptography, uh, cryptology, there's a set of requirements which are embedded in these. Uh, in these FIPS standards, 140-1 and 140-2. For everything else, there's a different set of standards, which you call the common criteria. And we're going to discuss those in our next lecture. Thank you.